Good morning, students. I am Dr. Gopal Krishna Amgaunkar, Associate Professor and HOD, Department of Economics, Government Prashkar College, Enkinad Yuru Udupi. Today, I am going to take up a topic for discussion from the international economics, that is international liquidity. Of course, this is one of the very important concept regarding international trade. If there is any problem in this particular uh, international liquidity, definitely that causes a lot of problems in the uh, international trade. So, in the beginning, I am going to define this particular term and then we will come back to the problems of international liquidity and if it is possible in this class only solutions, etc. Uh, the aggregate stock of international acceptable assets held by the central bank to settle as deposit in a country's balance of payment is considered as international liquidity. Of course, International liquidity provides a measure of a country's ability to finance its deficit in balance of payments without resorting to adjustment measures. Remember, when there is a problem in the international liquidity, then you have to search for some other, you know, adjustment measures. Otherwise, you may not come out of the deposit in the international balance of payment. In such case, there will be problem. So, the shortage of liquidity hampers the expansion of global trade and its surplus leads to global inflationary pressures. So, shortage as well as the surplus both will become a problematic conditions for the international trade. International liquidity is generally used as synonym for international reserves also. Most of the time you are going to hear foreign reserves, foreign reserves like that. So, it is also used synonymously as international reserves. Such reserves include countries' official gold, stock holdings, its convertible foreign currencies, SGRs, and its net reserves position in the IMF, etc. So, if the country is having this all amount in huge, then there is no problem of international liquidity. Of course, Heller and Mackinnon, they are going to, you know, uh, define in different way, in a little broader way, that is what international liquidity includes international borrowings, commercial credit operations, and the international financial structure in a country's reserves. Of course, uh, in international liquidity, there are two things. The resource one is conditional and one is unconditional. The unconditional international liquidity consists of a country's official gold stock, holdings of its foreign currencies and SDRs, its net position in the IMF, and provide private holdings of international assets, etc. This is the most important things, of course, uh, that decides uh, your you know international uh, liquidity conditions. So that is why is this unconditional international uh, liquidity position should be consolidated. So of course, uh, definitely majority of the countries are facing this international, uh, you know, liquidity problems, and that definitely has been hampering the development also in international trade. So in that respect, what are the problems they are going to face? I have to discuss one after another these particular problems. Uh, basically, BOP deposits, high tariff barriers, attitude of development countries, unequal distribution of internal resources are they a few. Of course, I explain in little bit little detail about this. BOP deposit here means there have been increasing BOP deposits of the majority of countries in the world. In a particular, in particular, after the opening of LDCs to world markets, remember that when the LDCs are open to the world market in the sense when you sign to the you know, global WTO, automatically you are open to the world markets. So, these countries have been facing persistent BOP deposit. Too much dependence on the exports. Ex export these economies to international fluctuation in the demand for and prices of their products. Because uh, uh, when you sign to the WTO, automatically your economy is exposed to the world economy. LDCs have to, you know, uh, do a lot of works to increase their exports and all these things. In such case, definitely they are going to face some problems in the international liquidity. So, there will be BOP deposit also. They have become unstable due to international cyclical instability. As you know, probably several years, from several years after globalization, there is definitely there is instability in the international, uh, you know, uh, conditions, economic conditions. And even today also the same condition is persisting. So, from that angle, there will be some BOP deposit. It's the first, you know, uh, problem. Second one, high tariff barriers. See, remember the exports of LDCs to developed countries have not been increasing, thereby adversely affecting their export earnings. Because uh, one of the other reasons, LDCs is not able to fetch the, uh, the opportunities uh, and they can't able to increase their exports as they wish to the developed countries. That is why 
they are adversely affected with export earnings. One of the reasons for the non-expansion of their export has been high tariff barriers imposed by the countries on their exports. Of course, every time uh, whatever the reforms has come into the existence, uh, you know, enactment or enforcement or implementations in such case, uh, LDCs are going to face some problems from that reason. Even there is no barriers as such, but there are some, uh, you know, opportunities for the developed countries to impose the barriers. They are doing that, and because of that reasons, these uh, LDCs or uh, some uh, uh, developing countries are going to face a lot of problems. So, especially by the regional group like the EEC, etc., because uh, you know, number of uh, you know regional groups are there today. Uh, that groups uh, will charge some or uh, you know. Uh, impose some tariffs from the countries uh, which are not belonging to their groups. So in such case, there will be high tariffs on the uh, uh, their exports. And another reason is attitude of developed countries. Of course, this is the uh, genuinely most of the uh, LDCs are knowing that, but they can't able to come out of this because they are the LDCs. This is the reasons why they can't able to do this. Majority of developed countries have surplus in their balance of payments. Of course, every time they are having surplus balance of payment, they are creditors of LDCs and do not take any interest in getting rid of their surplus so as to increase international liquidity. They are not uh, interested in. Uh, the real interest in the development of the LDCs. That is why they want to keep them in the same positions. That is why attitude of the developer countries is another reasons why they can't able to go. Uh, they, the liquidity problems have to be overcome. Unequal distribution of international reserves. Of course, the distribution of internal reserves is biased and favors the developed countries. It is primarily based on their quotas in the IMF. Where, whenever the IMF quotas are revised, the larger share goes to developer countries. It is a well-known thing because uh, every time the reserves should be go to the developed countries. If sometimes a few developed countries, and sometimes a, a group of developed countries, whatever it may be. But uh, everywhere, even IMF, IB, I mean, everywhere, their uh, strength is uh, very high, and that is why they are going to get uh, you know good things from out of that. It is the developing countries whose need for international liquidity is greater, which suffer from its shortage. So from that angle, if you see, definitely these countries are in uh, a trouble because of this type of you know uh, un unequal distribution of international reserves too. So uh, I, I can conclude this today's you know lecture because. Uh, you have uh, you are going to get some time to analyze and understand these topics even better so from that angle please if you have doubts regarding these much of topics you can go through and next time i will come back with the measures to solve the problems of international liquidity when there is a problem then there should be solutions also what type of solutions that you can think of and we will try uh, this that one in the next class so dear students please uh, if you have any doubts if you have any problems with these particular topics please uh, contact me and try to get answers for that. There may be a number of other reasons too, but I have highlighted some important reasons here. And by that, you can uh, you know um, uh, try to uh, sort out the problems because when you are, whenever you are going to find out the exactly reasons for that, there should be some problem. There should be some solutions also. What type of solutions are there? We will discuss in my next class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.